Live Wire takes you now inside the writer's mind. This week we travel inside the mind of author and pugilistic journalist Catherine Dunn. Okay, here we go. Hmm. Rats. Come on, Dunn. You see that? You see that bum right there, do you? That's an empty page, kiddo. It wants to tear your guts out. You heard me, Dunn. That blank page is sitting there, waiting to murder you. Now, this is what it's all about, Scribblers. Two titans of type going toe-to-toe to spit in each other's eye. Catherine, the mad geek Dunn, and the one and only author's nightmare. The Bishop of Block, the conceptual stonewall, the blank page. Yeah, there you go. Start moving now, Dunn. Move them hands. Bit of a tiptoe here as the opponents circle each other in the writer's ring. Dunn seems unsure how to begin the chapter, and that eight and a half by 11 is showing a whole lot of nothing, Porky. Yeah, Brian, what you've got here is a real struggle for the ages, right? A classic rumble that pits pen versus papyrus. Omer himself was said to sit and goggle a fresh sheet of parchment for hours at a time, Brian. Well, let's see if Don has got the push to take a poke at the first paragraph. You gotta pound that blank page, Dunn. You gotta punish it. It don't matter what you're throwing now. You just gotta pound it. Drop some ink on that bum. He was six beers deep and inclined to offer advice. Yeah. Oh, the muse is really starting to move now, Porky. That's right, Brian. She's banished the critic and shed the stickler. Now she can welcome the muse. That's exactly what you got to do if you want to keep them creative juices in the cup and offer your tea cozy. I'm not exactly sure what you're talking about, Porky, but Catherine Dunn has really started to lay down some letters. Blank Page ain't going to give you nothing, Dunn. Blank Page ain't never done nobody no favors. Blank Page will cut your throat with a boot razor if there was two bits in it. Don has begun to establish a solid narrative. She is positively pummeling that pro. Oh, yeah, Brian. Don's really swinging that script. That's it, Don. Go to work. You gotta hunt for it, Don. You gotta bleed. Start pitching haymakers or start kissing canvas. Wait a sec. That doesn't sound right. For they that think they might that those... Uh-oh, bla- yeah, oh, no. it looks like she's hooked her laces on some locution there. The blank page is really flaunting its watermark. Come on, Dunn, what are you doing? Are you spell checking? No, the muse don't move without music, Brian. This is really not the time to proofread. You've got to have cadence to the keystroke at this point in the draft, or you might as well do the Dutch. Hey, you're here to drum the bag off of the wall, Dunn. Now play peekaboo with your spaghetti button syntax. Oh, a swift kick in the motivational trousers from the creative process, and Dunn is back on her fingers. Come on, Dunn. She jabs with dialogue, metaphor, button hook, another jab. Come on, Dunn. Protagonist makes a dumb show of dramatic irony. Character conflict contrasts the counterplot. Imagery, parody, simile, hyperbole, soliloquy. Oh, Dunn is unstoppable, man, Brian, an immutable, potent voice. There you go, Dunn. That ain't no allegory. That's a Sunday school cream puff. You can see that character arc over there? It couldn't break its own nose. That's it, Dunn. Go to work. Go to work. She is absolutely obliterating the blank space. It could be all over. Damn. Oh, damn it. Hello. Catherine Dunn, how's it going? Great. Hey, so this is Terry Meyer, editorial assistant over at Stumbler and Finch. Yeah, hoping to get an accelerated forecast on your primary deliverable date for your novel, The Cut Man, okay? Really gonna need that. A lot of stakeholders here, Catherine. If you need help finishing it, I'd be happy to help you out of a jam. Just need a firm date. So what can I put you down for, hmm? Oh, that's rich, Dunn. This guy couldn't write a list for the green grocer. Listen... Terry, is it? Yeah. The day I wind my watch for a wet-nosed copy boy with a $10 belt and a new set of loafers, that's the day I sleep through the 10 count. Oh, Dunn, right to the breadbasket. That's got to hurt. Uh, but I... uh, Now tag his toe for him, Dunn, and wheel him off to the morgue. Now, you run along and tell whichever uncle got you this job (laughs) that if he's worried, he can talk to my agent. But don't try this bum's rush with a Wisenheimer twit who squawks down his nose at me. I got work to do. Uh, um, okay. Katie, baby, you got a heart as big as a turnip truck. Ah, thanks. You're gonna eat grease lightning and crack thunder. That's enough of that. Okay, kid. Come on, let's go catch that chicken. This has been Inside the Writer's Mind with Catherine Thank you.
You've been listening to a snippet of Livewire, the radio variety show that's like a chew toy for your brain. For more information about the show or to download our podcast, visit livewireradio.org.